Let's send it FedEx. See you in September. to the Apollo of Temple, the campus of Temple University here in Philadelphia. And tonight, it's a milestone evening for the Owls as they go for win number 1,500. Only five other schools have reached that plateau, and it's going to be a tough task tonight with right Michigan State in town. Hi, everybody. Dave Sims along with Digger Phelps. And tonight, Digger, I'll tell you what, it's the atmosphere like a heavyweight championship fight. This is going to be unbelievable. One player in particular holds a pretty predominant key for this game this evening. Well, four months from now, both of these teams want to be in that big final eight game. But tonight, it's Mateen Cleaves that's got to do it for Michigan State. He's got the experience. He's got the know-how. And I think if he attacks his own, that's how Michigan State pulls us off. Should be one heck of an interesting game. Tom Izzo leads the Spartans into town. He was the national coach of the year last year as Michigan State was co-champions in the Big Ten. The FedEx starting lineups, Granger, Klein, Smith, Bell, and Cleves for the Spartans, who come in at 2-0. For Smith, he's off to a magnificent start. He's only missed three shot he's shots. He's 16 of 19 in the first two games for Michigan State. For Temple, Barnes, Karcher, Lyde, Brokenborough, and Sanchez. And for Rashid Brokenborough, a streaky shooter. Off to a good start. He's the top scorer, the left-hander, just under 15 points a game. The Owls of Coach are led by the wise old Owl of North Broad Street, John Cheney, in his 17th season here at Temple. And this year, John Cheney has got the city of Philadelphia, and particularly the Owls fans, really turned on with this addition. Digger, the keys tonight for John's ball club. Well, it's obvious right now when you take a look at controlling Cleves, he will try to attack the zone with penetration. But if you do a good job of protecting the paint, now you force Michigan State to take those perimeter shots, which have not been successful for teams playing against Temple Zone when they've only given up 50 points a game. Barnes and Lyde inside. They are really solid players. They combine for 10 offensive rebounds against Georgetown. Tonight's no different against Antonio Smith in that Michigan State front line. Allison. On the other side of the table, Michigan State, when you look what they have to do to win this game, Cleves, yes, has to take the go over, game over and attack the zone. But offensive rebound. Another key in this game. Big teams with front lines have got to control ball, offensive rebound points against zones. And yet the key, I think, as we talked to Tom Izzo earlier tonight, when Greer and Wadley come off the bench, you'll see a different lineup, different type of speed control team, which Temple brings to the table in scoring points. These clubs met a year ago, and Pepe Sanchez was the star. Look at that. Seven points to two assists, but eight steals, a career high, and he really harassed. Mateen Cleaves last year. Big steal late in the game. Helped to ice it. Pepe Sanchez, you really got to be aware of where he is on the floor. Our officials tonight, some good ones. Phil Bova, Jody Sylvester, and Tim Higgins. That's a Final Four crew, and this is a Final Four game. Four months away, we're looking at what we're doing in November, and let's get it going. There we go. Temple will get the first opportunity. To Michigan State, man-to-man. Man. Sanchez. Sanchez. Here's Broken Bro. Kevin Lied, the freshman, posting up. Here's Karcher. Been struggling of late. He was all everything coming out of Baltimore a couple of years ago. Inside, here's Lamont Barnes. I'm more comfortable at the four spot at the power four. He's been the center last year. They double team him with 10 on the shot clock. He forces. Lied is there. Gets the air ball. Goes up. Had it rejected. And they call a jump ball. It will be Spartan basketball. Pretty good post defense when they double team Barnes inside and they ran right at him and forced that shot. But the jump ball, don't forget, you've got to keep light off that board. Now watch the double team right inside. Good ball control as far as team defense. Temple, of course, in that famous zone defense to start the game. The key to me is get it inside early. Don't start taking perimeter shot. Look to get it inside to get points in the paint. Antonio Smith with the ball. Here's Cleves. Klein's going to dial up. Can't get it. Bell with the rebound, pop quickly, and out of bounds off of Lamont Barnes. It'll be Michigan State ball. One thing against Temple Zone is you saw Bell, who's an offensive guard. Guards can't rebound on offensive rebounds because of everything that goes at the ball in the paint. One minute in here at the Apollo of Temple. 
Cleves turns it over. A breakout for Broken Barrel. And he'll wait for help. Broken Barrel puts it on the floor, goes up, and a foul on the play. Good penetration by Broken Barrel to break away to draw the foul, but on the other side of it, when Matee please penetrates, someone has to get back, and of course, Jason Klein did a great job of getting back on defense. Out of bounds underneath. 2-3 zone now by Michigan State. Jason Klein with the foul, his first. Pretty good defense. It's going to take a 30, uh, expecting the man-to-man -man timeout. Man-to-man -man defense, and look at what's there. Don't forget some more basketball coming your way at Chaminade and Syracuse in the Maui Invitational. That's coming up Monday, 2 p.m. Eastern time. And number 17, Indiana against Kansas State. That should be a terrific game. And then over on the deuce, it's North Carolina taking on Hampton. And uh, Utah tries a rebound from its defeat to Utah State taking on Arizona State. A full day of basketball Monday on ESPN. We got a great week of basketball next week when you see all these tournaments starting up. But right now, that great defense by Michigan State by showing the zone and switching the pickup so that Temple had to use one of their five 30 second timeouts. Temple 3 0 coming in after knocking off Mississippi a couple of nights ago, 68 52. They were down 9 0 before going on a 37 run to take control of that game. Led by Greer and Wadley coming off the bench, which is a whole new dimension. This team starts, but why do you see these other players come off the bench for Temple? Still in the zone defense, a little mix-up for what Temple's not expecting, knowing that Michigan State's normally a man-to-man -man team. Here's Broken Bro. Inside, they go to Barnes. Against Smith, good match up there. Barnes jump, hook is good. Very solid play inside against Smith. Michigan State right back. Here's Cleves. His first shot is good. Mateen Cleves. And what they did against the zone was run a high post pick screen on the guard so that you can drive over the top just like it's man to man. And you'll get that shot. So Temple's got to adjust with the opposite wing coming up to take that play away. Cleves shot 40% last year. Off to a great start this year at 65% in his first two games. Sanchez. Temple's very effective. A lot of times they can be ugly offensively, Digger. Yes, they can, but they just beat you with their defense in the second half by getting the guards a rebound as well as getting steals on passing lanes. Sanchez was locked up and had to toss it up there. And that heave is taken back by Michigan State. Again, no offensive rebound for Temple. And that's where I think when you take a look at what this game comes down to, the front lines have to develop. Both teams are looking to get that experience. They've got great guards, great perimeter game. But the key to me is front line play with both teams. Bell runner in the lane. And how about Barnes? He got a piece of it, but it fell for Charlie Bell. If you get reversals and drive gaps, not the guy playing you, but at the next guy, you will get that penetration against Temple Zone. And that's exactly what Bell did. Broken barrel, and guarded by Jason Klein. Live posting up. Good matchup against Antonio Smith. Freshman live. Shoots over. Back rim that one. Here comes Michigan State with a two-point lead. And open in the corner, Bell. Here's Cleves. Good at quarterback running a program. It's there is in the country. A.J. Granger, shot clock at 15. Shot clock at 10 now. Bell to Cleves, under 10. Let's see what the Spartans can do here. Five seconds. Cleves looks at the shot. Runner in the lane off the glass. Nicely done by Mateen Cleves. And when you have confidence in your game, you can do anything, even a bank shot when the clock goes down to zero. How about that. Stepping into the three-point area, inside the three-point area. Live, going to try to muscle back. His jump hook is good. So a couple of jump hooks of Temple on the board. One by Barnes and one by Live. We got a lot of confidence in the first half against Georgetown, New York, last week, where he ended up with 14 points and eight rebounds. And again, when you take a look at what Lamont Barnes and Wide bring to the game inside, very important for the te Temple to attack the defense of Michigan State. Queens cleaves over the top. Nicely done with the jump shot. That's a three-pointer, nine to four, Michigan State. And the reason why, they played off because they're afraid of his penetration, and that's what he does. He reads very well. He can drive, he can dish, and he can shoot the threes. Broken barrel. Here's Karcher struggling mightily as a freshman. 
Gives it up to Barnes. Broken barrel shakes free. Can't get it. Rebound to Cleves. But they got a whistle. Fifteen ten to go. First half here at the Apollo. Mateen Cleves showing the All-American form early on here in North Philadelphia. Little runner gets the Spartans on the board. It's 9-4. So we take our first time out here from the Apollo of Temple. Nasty storm. Wet road. Looks pretty bad, huh? No problem. That's the beauty of Subaru all-wheel drive, the ultimate safety feature. Thanks, kid. See, it automatically transfers power from the wheels that slip to the wheels that grip. And only Subaru puts it on every car they make. And that's no accident. Subaru, the beauty of all-wheel drive. for Diskette World Travel News. Notebook computers are traveling lighter with built-in Super Disk drives. Only the Super Disk drive works with both regular floppies and 120 megabyte Super Disk diskettes. Floppies everywhere are thrilled because a built-in Super Disk is two drives in one and other drives are on the way out. We can save a little. Super Disk can save a lot. Together we can save the world. Super Disk from a nation. Get it in Acer Notebooks. Michigan State missed its first two shots. They've hit their last four and lead it 9-4 here in Philadelphia. And talk about finding the gap here for Michigan State, Dicker. But they do an excellent job of once you read what's open. When the zone comes to you, that means something's open. And when they find the gap, you're going to get easy points to go inside, as you see right now. Ball fake, drive, take it, bell goes up, easy layup into the paint. And you can do that on the weak side when you look to the middle and get that reversal pass. John Cheney's ball club off to a slow start this evening. Trailed 9 0 to Ole Miss and Wake Forest by a larger margin, 15 points. They came back to win both of those games. Well, Wake Forest had them down 16. They win by 11. That's a 27 point swing. And this is what Temple does to you in the second half. There's some pressure on Klein. Smith outside. Cross court. Karcher just missed it. But during that timeout, Cheney started to play the passing lanes. They adjusted the zone and forced the turnover. And this is exactly what we talk about. He does a great job during timeouts. He'll do a better job during halftime and knowing what they can adjust to. And don't forget, soon you're going to see the two guys I love to give them some more offense when Greer and Wadley come off the bench. Second timeout. Check that second uh, turnover. <laughs> second turnover. Thank you, pardon, by Michigan State. Michigan State plays pretty good aggressive man to man, and they do an excellent job of keeping you off the boards. Rebound, Karcher. He goes up and draws the foul. Karcher, they look for a lot of years of physical inside play from the big fella. Well, that's that's exactly what Karcher can do. He's got a size factor because Belt cannot keep him off the boards. So he made that move, got by him, drew the foul, and now he's on the line get after going for an offensive rebound score. A.J. Granger picked up the foul for Michigan State. Don't forget, Karcher had to sit out last year. He wasn't eligible to play. And I talked to John Cheney before the game, and I said, why is he shooting 26%? You know, he's struggling. Comes into this game. And, and he said, basically, because he's rusty. And this kid is a great player. Oh. Cheney, the father image, knows how to work this kid over and get his mindset to become a positive. He needs a breakout game. It could be tonight. McDonald's All-American, 3,100 points in his four years in high school ball down at St. Francis Academy in Baltimore. Nine to five, Michigan State. Here's Cleves. Karcher got a piece of him. That'll be a foul on Mark Karcher. Well, you notice how Temple adjusted to that pick and roll play. We said the wing has got to come up and play it like it's a switch man to man. They did. Even though he got fouled, they adjusted so he can't shoot that shot or penetrate down the lane. A great adjustment for the Temple zone. Here's Smith in the corner up top to Cleves. Andre Hudson's in the game, number 34. Morris Peterson, number 42 for the Spartans. Smith shakes free. 
That's only his fourth miss all season. First two games and change now. But Dave, no points in the paint yet. You've got okay. to attack the zone inside. Now states into that mode of just trying to live with perimeter shots. Opening for Sanchez. Couldn't get the hook to fall. Here's Cleves in a hurry. Three on two. Cleves to the goal. And he scores. Mateen Cleves. And he's got nine points. Well, see, he just took Broken Burrow. Just gave him a little head fake. Landed his body a little bit. Got Broken Burrow to lean and took it into the rim. Cleves shooting four for four. Temple with the ball down six. We're going to go back to the freshman. Let's see what Lyde can do. Karcher from outside. That's a three. Can't get it. Great boxing out by Michigan State. Please, Klein's a real good shooter. They pay a lot of attention to him. Well, Temple's biggest weakness right now, no offensive rebound situation. There's a good pass inside from Cleves to Smith, and there's a point, a bucket in the paint, 13-5, Michigan State. And Greta Cleves from reading the back cut when Smith went to the rim, just threw it over everybody's head. Temple, two of nine from the field. Sanchez, long study, doesn't shoot. Being guarded by Peterson. Here's Barnes. Long arms. A little fatal on the baseline. Can't get it. Rebound. Lide. But Lide pushed off. He pushed off big time and he draws a foul. Yeah. You know, we were talking so much about Mateen Cleaves and how he's able to see so much and do so much. Check this out. Well, he's got great ball control once he reads situations to where he gets open. And when you, you know what you've got going for yourself, you just take the confidence of what he is as a veteran player. Watch the eye contact. Watch Smith just open when you had that position of going up on top of the zone. And that's what he did very, very well when Barnes went for the fake. Now, let's see what Temple does now. Here's Lynn Greer guarding the ball, number 14, Quincy Wadley in the game. Two different types of guards in the game now, and a foul against Michigan State. Well, they're switching on that pick and roll, which Temple does a very good job on. As that happened, Greer was hit by a moving screen and drew the foul. Greer and Wadley right now gives Temple more speed, more quickness, and more offensive firepower. You got better shooting. So that it opens up the inside game for Barnes and Ryan. Tony Smith, the foul, his first. Temple down eight. Michigan State's done a good job, led by Mateen Cleaves. He's got nine points. Here's Broken Barrel in the lane, fading. Can't get it. Rebound. Goes at Andre Hudson. Long pass. Smith is there. And he scores for a 15-5 Michigan State lead. And that's Barnes and Lyde. They didn't have vision going back on defense. They turned their heads, and Smith just gets up and down the floor. Great move by Smith to get that open free basket. He's off to a great start. And they're down points, 10. Four points and four rebounds. Lynn Greer. Big time shooter. 47% from three-point range a year ago. 14th national. Works hard. Lefty drive. Can't get it. Wide rebound. Puts it back in. Couple of outs on the floor. Back comes Cleaves in Michigan State. Cleaves sets up Kelly, who's in the game. Can't get that. Put back is good. Well done by Morris Peterson. Well, they beat the zone down the floor. And when you do that, you're going to get easy spots because the Temple players are looking to get the spots, and there's open positions, and that's why they got the offensive rebound. A 10-point lead for the defending co-champions out of the Big Ten. Live, and it knocked away by Smith. Great hustle. Does he save it? No. But great job as he was tried to save it back inbounds. 11.01 to go, first half. And so far, it's been all Michigan State. The team cleaves. Gets it down to Antonio Smith, beating Temple down the floor. I remember when I was little, watching the first satellites go over. But what's about to happen in space seems even more amazing. To put a space station into orbit, astronauts from 13 countries living there for up to 10 years, that's a pretty great achievement. I'm John Donor, and I work at Mobile. I developed the grease that will lubricate the International Space Station's air system. We might take breathing for granted on Earth, but it's very important for them. I feel very proud for Mobile that we are a part of that. Number four, please. This is just too good to keep to ourselves. I know. We have got to let the people know. You're right. No, don't. Everybody, I have an announcement. 1010321 is now better than ever. How's that? Now you save 50% on calls over 10 minutes. Half off 10 minutes? What about calls to Mexico? International calls over 10 minutes are half off, too. <laughs> you forgot something. 
Double fries and make it fast. <laughs> These days, it seems like everybody's got a Cherokee or an Explorer. Me? I like to stand out a bit. That's why I drive a Subaru Outback. With a big cargo bay and all-wheel drive, you get all the sport utility you need. But with a smooth ride and better gas mileage, the Outback is far from ordinary. Like me, really. <laughs> What a weird-looking bunch that was. Fourth rank Spartans with a 10-point lead early on here at Temple. And Dicker Phelps, this has got to be a coach's dream, a classic fast break that we saw here by the Spartans. Well, Michigan State has dominated defensive boards, and when you do that, especially when you're playing against a zone team, watch, the ball does not even hit the floor. Outlet pass, look down the floor, open layup. Smith goes in, and that's how you beat the zone before it sets up. Tom Izzo knows that they can get quick points, easy points. He's done a great job. The team cleaves out now, taking a blow, and you got a 10 point lead. Not a bad time to do it. Temple Doug, has got to get on the offensive glass. Doug Davis in, number 34, Cleaves. Off to a terrific start. Greer, Broken Burrow, Barnes, Lyde, and Wadley on the floor for the Temple Owls. Here's Wadley. Jackpot. One second to go, and four o'clock awareness by the Temple Owls. They turn it over. Well, let's understand something. Tonight's a 35-second shot clock. When they played in the Coaches for Cancer game in Madison Square Garden, it was an experimental shot clock at 45. So Temple, of course, knowing they kept teams in the 50s, likes to play a little bit of delay game, but they forgot just 10 seconds off the clock. Doug Davis and Kelly in the backcourt right now for Michigan State. A.J. Granger, Morris Peterson, and Andre Hudson up front. See, I feel when you take half-court offense and half-court defense, both these teams are half-court teams. You know, Kentucky wins a title 12 for years. They want to run, gun, and press. Arizona had the guards. But when you have half-court teams to get to the Final Four, you can have great guards, but your front lines are going to dominate points in the paint and dominate both boards, and they haven't established that yet, either team. Kelly sets the lefty. Peterson for three. Well, nicely done by Morris Peterson, his second three of the season. It's a 20 to 7 Michigan State lead. See, I talked to Tom Izzo about three weeks ago, and I knew this game was going to come up. They're playing Duke in a great eight, but then they play at UConn on the fifth. I said, Why are you doing this? He says, I've got to get my front line ready if we're going to get to the final four. We'll play these three games in the next two weeks. Great defense, a five second game. Indeed, it was. A reminder that when we're done here, it's off the Maples Pavilion. We're number two, Stanford. The Cardinal playing host to Southwest Missouri State. How about the job by Steve Alford's club upsetting Missouri and Columbia on Wednesday. And Stanford dominated SMU with a well-balanced senior attack at Southwest Missouri State. And Stanford coming up right after our game from Philadelphia. Peterson, second three-point attempt, no good. Rebound, the loose ball comes to Quincy Wadley. Good defense by Michigan State. Here's Broken Burr. Wadley has yet to put one up. Karcher going against Granger. Tipple's been down before. Here's Greer setting up Wadley. Corner jump. No good. Granger wrestling with Lyde tied up. <laughs> A.J. Granger out of Finlay, Ohio. Nice job well, I, going I, against Mark Karcher. I asked Timmy Higgins before he gave me Joe this semester. I said, hey, let me ask you guys something. How are you going to call that tie-up tonight? They looked at me and they said, well, we're as confused as everybody else when you take a look at it. If the offensive player gets it, the next guy that touches it, on a tie-up, it goes to the other team. And, and yet, as you saw right here, they went to the arrow. I think it's the most confusing call this year for fans. On paper, coming into the season, that looked like a fabulous roll. Granger turned it over because of Parcher getting his hand on the ball. So turnover for the Spartans. But what happens is you tell your guy, pick up a loose ball. Now you're on offense because you got possession. The next guy that comes over and ties you up on the defense, it's a jump ball. The defense gets the ball. It should work real well in theory, right? Yeah, but not practice. <laughs> broken, bro. Forces one off the glass, he'll go to the line. Well, this is what Temple does in games like this. You know, here we got nine minutes to go in this half, and, you know, Michigan State can get a little complacent. And this is how all you try to do when you're down double figures is get it under 10, momentum comes back. Broken Barrel being very aggressive going to the rim and drawing the foul. State doesn't want to get into foul trouble early. Kelly's foul, his first. 
broken bow at a University City High School right here in Philadelphia. Tim Cleaves coming right back. You know, great kid. At this summer, he did an internship. He's a sociology major and went back to his neighborhood and worked with kids on violence management, anger management. Which is huge. Oh. A couple free throws for Rasheed. Ten-point Michigan State lead. Oh, yes, Trouble. Yes, yes. And Greer does a good job going against Davis. Davis killed his dribble, thought he was going to get some help, and got into trouble. And a great move tonight by Tom Izzo. Get the guy back in the game. The man, Mateen Cleaves, coming back in to get control of this game. And watch the hands. Greer's quick. I told you he got speed and quickness. And he gets fouled, going away in a breakaway. Cleaves back into the game. There's Lynn Greer. See, I think Lamont Barnes has got to step up his game inside. They got to look from inside. Uh, you know, Temple with their quickness has forced five turnovers. So from that side of it, they're still aggressive, and they just put you in that mood to get where now you got a chance to get under ten. Things go the other way. Jody Sylvester on the left, and Phil Bova talking to Harvey Pollock, legendary stat man here in yeah. Philadelphia and with the, the palestra. 70s and the palestra. If there's, a, if there's a ball being bounced somewhere, right. believe me, Harvey's there to tell you about it. You got it. You know Harvey from your days at Penn, man. Right? I don't want to say what that was. That was <laughs> three decades ago. It was. Did I say that? <laughs> How about that? I remember. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> you got I was a witness. I was young then. I was 22. Weren't we all? <laughs> Temple in a big hole, down 20 to 9. Barnes, here's Karcher posting up. Karcher, fade away. No, sir. Rebound from Michigan State. But well, it's a foul against the Spartans. They got Morris Peterson. Another push off inside. Well, you got to credit Temple for going in and mixing it up. I think this is something, at least they're being aggressive. Don't for offensive rebounds. And maybe Greer pushed him off by the other side of it. Let's take a look. Inside push off. Here comes Greer. Look at that. Greer hit him first. Temple. Away with it. How about this shooting tonight, David? Temple just 3 of 15, 20 percent. It's early. They come in shooting 38 percent in their early. first three games. There's no question about it. It's you, early. And that's one thing we want to tell the fans. Yeah. They are used to being down. They don't play the prettiest of basketball. That's right. And this is, you know, you hear a little groan here, but a lot of fans are used to this. Absolutely. And Michigan State give them a lot of credit. Done a good job. Shot clock at 10. Hoisted by Broken Barrow. My goodness, that was a long shot. Cuts it to eight. Now momentum the crowd. Turnover. Here we go. Here's the Temple formula. Stepping right up. It's almost like they put you in a home. And Broken Barrow hits his big three, which cuts it to eight points. We've got a game. This is Ken. Marty. This is Terry, my STS guy. My guy. Joel, he's mine. This is my STS guy. At STS, if it has four wheels, we can handle it with guaranteed service, including tires, brakes, tune-ups, and much more. And because we're employee-owned, we work hard to earn your trust, to know you better, and to know your car better. STS Tire and Auto Centers. My guy. He's my STS guy. It's a trust thing. Welcome to Mawa Pontiac GMC, carrying on the reliable 40-year tradition of El Pontiac. At Mawa Pontiac GMC, you'll be treated with the personalized and professional service you deserve. We'll do everything we can to get your choice of vehicle, like the new Pontiac Grand Am or the sporty Grand Prix. Also, come and see the new GMC Jimmy and the Yukon Denali. Plus, choose from our huge selection of pre-owned vehicles. So stop by and visit us at Mawa Pontiac GMC, 386 Route 17 South in Mawa. It's a battle between Boston College running back Mike Cloud and West Virginia's Amos Airway. If you like running the football, watch this game. Then at three, Ron Dane and the Badgers look to keep their Rose Bowl hopes alive against the tough Nittany Lion D. At 7.30, the Tide and the Tigers. No rivalry delivers more late game excitement. Boston College, West Virginia at noon. Penn State, Wisconsin at three. Alabama, Auburn at 7.30. Tomorrow on ESPN. Welcome back to the Apollo of Temple. Dave Sims and Digger Phelps with you and the ESPN crew. 
game summary to this point. Look at the outstanding shooting by the Spartans. Cleves with nine points and two assists and rebounds, a two to one edge for the Spartans, as well as turnovers, although Temple leading in that category. But understand something, that 64% for Michigan State could be a setup for the second half, which Temple holds teams to 36% shooting percentage defense, even though they're shooting lousy. They're only Temple on the other side. It's only down eight points. And this is exactly what they do to you. Let me ask you this. It's one thing you think Temple, John Cheney, even going back to the Chief and Don Casey, think that dog on zone. So that's one thing you're worried about. Then you get into this situation where you get lulled, you get that false sense of security. Well, and then the team Cleveland goes out for rest, and they're up 13. Next thing you know, now it's an eight-point eight game, and Temple has the ball ready to cut it again. Greer, some mileage on that one as well. And that's an air ball. I thought he was fouled on that one. Take a look at our ESPN.com news and notes. ACC rolling. You bet. 17 of 18. That's not bad. Fall signing period ends. Check out who's going where. And Billis is best. Jay Billis checks out the top five shooters in the country. For all the stories in college basketball, log on to ESPN.com. In and out for Bell. Rebound Lamont Barnes. But I like the penetration. And Bell was open. He just didn't hit the shot. The defensive rebound for Temple. That was the first rebound for Lamont Barnes. He's been quiet all night on offense. They've got to get him involved with some points. And just as you said, they go to him against A.J. Granger. Barnes out of Kentucky. Baseline laid up and in. He's the man. Cut to Barnes, six. Two for four from the field. And the Owls just under seven minutes to go. Down by six. Tom Izzo thought it was a five-second count on the dribble to the basket. Tim Higgins says no. Bell. Well, he got himself in to a trap there, as is Granger. Nice look inside and a foul against Wadley as he tried to take it away from Jason Klein. Well, you've got to get Barnes involved to establish an inside game. Finally, he gets it to where he is open, reads very well, makes his move to the basket, and goes up and under. Easy two points. He's got to play with aggressiveness to get offensive points in the paint for Temple. Part of Temple's 7-0 run here to get back into the game, trailing by six. What do you look for from Michigan State right now with Temple a little bit, a little bit of momentum on their side? Fight fire, wood fire. You got to get Smith involved. They're trying to live and die with a perimeter shot. I think you look inside, he's open. And how about Sanchez? Almost the steal. They do turn it over. Well, they trap the pass in the corner, got the turnover, and this is what they do. They keep mixing defenses. That last time out, they went to the trap defense. Seventh turnover by Michigan State. Spartans averaging 12 on the early season here, the first two games. Coming up on six minutes to go. Greer, long range. Raise the netting and goes out of bounds. So Lynn not in his uh, usual stroke mode at this point. One for seven are the Owls from three-point range. Rasheed Brokenborough is going to come in the next dead ball. Here's Smith in the corner. Klein, good shooter. Challenge. How about Bell? And they're going to get... Michigan State Smith, he wiped out Lynn Greer. So that'll be the second foul on Antonio Smith. Well, don't forget, Klein has, has really shot 41% last year shooting threes. And when they make that screen on the baseline shot, now watch Smith come in, goes right over and knocks Greer to the floor. Yes, that is a foul. And Smith. Starting real well this year. Here comes Karcher back in for Lamont Barnes. And so what Barnes did a good job challenging Klein. I think he may have gotten a piece of that shot from the court. Yeah, he's got to get a blow before halftime with six to go. But I, I really want Barnes to get more points in the paint and get the ball to establish the inside game for Temple. Here's Lynn Greer. Outstanding high school career here in Philadelphia in 1997. Philadelphia Big School Player of the Year by the Associated Press. Average 27 points a game. Morris Peterson back in for the Spartans. Talk about Greer the other night against uh, Ole Miss. Comes off the bench. He gets three steals. Plus he hits two threes when Temple went on that 30 to 7 run against Mississippi. Tonight they're on this run. He's in the game again. You bet. They're down five. A couple of career free throws. After He'll take his seat. 13. Broken Burrow back in. Michigan State, of course, that was their seventh team foul, putting Temple in the 101. Temple. 
with 14 fouls and the Owls in a 9-0 run. Well, don't forget the great sophomore guard, Robin O'Kelly of Wake Forest, who does the same thing that Cleves does. So they're used to this penetration. And get as we saw right there, the hand check. Well, how about this? Timmy Higgins came from the far side of the court. Jody Sylvester was going to call a traveling violation, and Timmy Higgins waved them off and said, no, Cleves was grabbed. That's the angle. I mean, they're too good officials. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, I, so I think that's where you get that break when you look at what's available. No question. But the penetration of Cleves, Temple is used to it because of the weight game with O'Kelly, who's a great point guard. Chris Peterson to Cleves. Five team fouls now on the outs. Klein set up. Got a good look at it. Knocked it down. That's a deuce. What state Jason is running the floor to get the threes. And when you do that and penetrate and you draw to the next man in that gap, you kick it off. And, and as we said, Klein is a good three-point shooter, shooting 41% last year. Wadley in the, the fire corner. A bit. Yeah, he did. Wadley in the corner to Brokenburg. Karcher trying to get off. But a slow start. He was one for six against Ole Miss the other night. Karcher fade away. Short on that one. Can't get it. He's that year man. off, I tell you what, yeah, 0 for 3. Man, he's pressing. Doesn't have the rhythm he's looking for. Penetration. Kick back. Klein wide open. He hit it. Can't leave him open. Jason Klein. I mean, that, that's his game. 25-16, Michigan State. And he sort of just put out the fire all together. I tell you what, 58% of his shots last year were three-pointers. And he made 69 of them. <laughs> That'll work. Pretty good formula. Brokenburg leans in. Will it go? No. See, any time against the zone when you can dribble penetrate and get in a position to find your open shooter, and this is what happens. Watch the reversal. There's your action. See the five white shirts in? He's wide open, and you've got to find him. You watch the adjustment now. They know they can't leave Pine open because he strokes the three. Brokenborough finished his high school career here in Philadelphia. He's third on the all-time public league scoring list. Now, Mr. Chamberlain was number one, and Greer number two. He was a part of that comeback against Wake. He had 16 points in that game in the second half when they were down 16 in that first half. They cut it under 10 by halftime and made that 11 point win. Got the free throws from the shoot, Brokenborough, seven point game. So Lamont Barnes back in for Temple. Cleves to Kelly. Andre Hudson. Charlie Bell in the game as well. So what State's doing is like they've got four out on the perimeter, one guy in the paint, and that forces the zone almost to match up, so you treat it like man to man. But again. Credit San Pepe Sanchez for playing that passing lane to force that turnover. Eighth turnover by the Spartans. Wadley's due to stroke one. Great three points. He has shooter. not put one up yet. No. Has not put up a shot. Sanchez in the backcourt. Here's Wadley. Broken by playing up front. Wadley. Cross court broken by touch pass. Broken barrel, 16 on the shot clock. Wide calling for the ball inside. Got to penetrate. Temple's staying around too much, not knowing the shot clock again. Nine seconds, shot clock. Sanchez shakes free. Leaves it for line. It got fouled. Great read by Pepe Sanchez. Knew the shot clock was going down, decided to create his own lane, found Lyde inside in the paint. Boy, you can hear the anxiety in the crowd as the shot clock got down under 10 seconds. Here's his penetration. He sees the pick and roll, goes. There's Lyde on the roll, finds him, goes up strong. Fouls on Bell. Charlie Bell picking up foul number two. Kevin Lyde, another McDonald's All-American. Hit that one hard off the rim. Here's a young man. Shot 61% from the field at Oak Hill a year yeah. ago. Yikes. That's not bad. No. A lot of layups. <laughs> they all count, big fella. 25-19. <laughs> we got a good one here in Philadelphia. Michigan State and Temple.
before you get a life, get a grip. Vice Grip, original locking pliers, the only tool you need. Consider this a plug for the new Dodge. Hey, you want real action? Turn on HBO. Because there's real life, and then there's the movies on HBO. Well, as we travel around college basketball, one thing we see a lot of, NBA players. There's Ron Harper of the world champion Chicago Bulls. Some time on his hands. And one guy who we feel in this game for sure is going to be a pro is Mateen Cleaves, but he's had a hard way to go. The ankle, he suffered that problem in the world championship game, stepped on a player's foot. His shoulder, he was waving to some friends, slipped and fell and separated that right shoulder. The leg he hurt in an exhibition game. And then he suffered a Friday the 13th injury with a bruised tailbone. But yet here he is. Look at the numbers he's put up to this point. Nine points. Looks like one of those charts you see in an orthopedic surgeon's <laughs> yeah. office. I know some good ones in New York. Maybe we can hook him up. You know it's amazing what Temple does to you? With 10-14 to go in the first half, Michigan State was had 20 to 7. It's almost three minutes, and they're stuck on 25 points. Now they get a nice put back there by Charlie Bell. And the point being is Temple always controls offensive and defensive momentum in any game. They wear you down. Temple 5 of 20 from the field. 25%. That's well below their three-game average of 38%. I still think they got to find Barnes. Here's Lyde operating. Boy, he back rimmed that one too. Leaves in a hurry. Good change of gear. Good setup. Ranger well done on the putback. No one boxed him out. He came down the middle of the paint. He was the last guy down the floor. And you can do that. If you get the quick shot, hit the glass, and he was there. Shelly had a back. wide open look, and then Granger was not contested. Ten-point lead for the Spartans. Two-man game. Sanchez to Wadley. Wadley still hasn't has not right. put up a shot yet. He was five for six shooting threes against Wake Forest last week. Here's Lyde, shot clock at 12. He's backing up. Broken Burrow at nine on the shot clock. Coming up on two minutes to go in the game. Broken Burrow hit five on the shot clock. Here's Barnes for three. Can't get it. Rebound, Mateen Cleaves. Well done on the box out against Pepe Sanchez. Here's Cleaves in a hurry. Sets up Kelly. Cleaves is strong. Isn't he? he? He's really big and filled out. He's really strong when he goes for the ball. Sally Bell, rebound live. His third. Inside, nice job on the defense by Hudson. Barnes, working, tried to set up live. How about Charlie Bell dropping down? Charlie Bell at 6 3, going against 6 9, Kevin Lyde. Well done, with a minute 30 to go. ESPN's Full Court is the best way to stay in touch with college basketball. You can see more than 450 games on pay-per-view. Order now and save $10. Call DirecTV or Prime Star. And don't forget, we got Duke on 23 times for the season. Amazing. Seeing how these Blue Devils are going to be the team to beat as the number one team in the country. Outstanding attraction. Keaton Sanders, number 15 in the game. And how about Wadley, his first shot, break back. Cleaves, they got numbers. Cleaves hard. He goes up and scores. Nicely done by Mateen Cleaves. And you just talked about the strength. Yeah. His being so strong was able to get that ball off the glass. 
And Sanchez wasn't even able to control it. I mean, he wasn't trying to take him down. He just wanted to make sure he didn't get the layup. But the point is this. They did a great job on Watley. And when you go to score, he breaks away. And his strength carries him to the basket. And he just banks it off the glass. Don't forget, he was a quarterback in high school playing football. Oh, yeah. Nice this guy's been up. around. Five for five from the field. All-American performance. Back rims that one wide. His fourth rebound. State is very physical. I mean, the Big Ten teams oh, yeah. play physical half-court games. We take a look at Purdue, Indiana, Minnesota. I mean, those teams are strong anyhow. So and that time, the team, please, did not get in front quick enough. Reminder, Courtyard by Marriott sponsoring our halftime report with Larry Beal. We'll get a look at the Battle of Florida coming up tomorrow. Dickie V's best point guards and opening night in the aforementioned Big Ten. That's our Courtyard by Marriott halftime report with Larry Beal coming up next. 55.5 seconds ago, Lynn Greer back at the line. Greer struggling from the field, but he's three for three from the line. Look for the second half to see Temple get more guard defensive rebounding and sort of get the quick breakaways. Look for Temple also to look to play the passing lanes and get the steal to get quick breakaways. That's been a trend of what John Cheney does at halftime in adjustments. Bruce Ball, Charlie Bell comes up with it for Michigan State. So Cleves, they got him out of the game. Give him a rest, well-deserved. Thomas Kelly back in and a 22nd timeout called by the Spartans. Ladies and gentlemen, there is currently only one in with the world champion boxing. They start this Saturday's rivalry weekend with college game day at 11 a.m. Eastern time. Then at noon, it's West Virginia playing host of Boston College. Great Big Ten battle at three follows. Number 12, Wisconsin, hosting number 14, Penn State. Then at 7.30, maybe the ultimate rivalry as Auburn takes on Alabama. Then on the deuce, it gets started with the last whack meeting ever between BYU and Utah. And then an in-state battle as South Carolina takes on Clemson. The BCS standings to this moment. The Volunteers of Tennessee, number one, UCLA, Kansas State, Florida State, and Florida. Well, UCLA, Southern Cal, that's going to be a war. We know that. It always is. And uh, Southern Cal is really good. They played well the last two weeks with the wins over Stanford and Washington. And what they love to knock off UCLA, which has won the last seven meetings. Temple's only had three offensive rebounds this game, and that's one thing we talked about, frontline play, establishing what you need to do to beat teams when you're missing shots. Coming up on 20 seconds ago, Kelly penetrates, puts it up, can't get it, put back is done by A.J. Granger. 13-point lead. Granger's done it twice, getting offensive rebounds, and that's what Tom Izzo wants, is to make his frontline play aggressive, not just on defense, but on offensive rebounding, and Temple is not getting any offensive rebounds. Did you hear somebody scream, why? That was Tom Izzo. Nine seconds to go, up 13, and he's screaming, and justifiably so, in the foul by Jason Klein. That, that drives you as a coach, I can tell you from experience. Sometimes the kids, when you've got them playing aggressive to get back, they don't think of shot clock or situations with nine to go. Why put Greer in the line to get a chance to make two foul shots? And that's where Greer is most effective so far tonight. Four for five on the night. Here's Tom. See, he'll be green about three more years. Is <laughs> that so long? Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know, the, I know the scene. Yeah, Tommy, sit down, baby. Suck it up. Been there, done it. Temple, 10, uh, 14 from the line to Michigan State's 0 for 1. Kelly in a hurry. Clock running down. Kelly, no, sir. And that'll do it for the first half here at the Apollo. The team cleaves. He and the Michigan State Spartans put on quite a show here in the first half. Got out to a nice lead. Had Temple challenge, but now we go to halftime. 33-21, and this has turned out to be the slugfest we thought it was going to be, Larry Bill. Absolutely, Dave Sims. 33-21, and there is no way to stop Mateen Cleaves when he gets rolling. The assists, he can score, off-bounce, doesn't matter. He can do it all. The Courtyard by Marriott halftime report is coming up next. The Battle of the Sunshine State. Florida freshman Ted Dupay trying to shoot down the Seminoles, plus Dick Vitale looking at the best point guards in the country. It's Miller time coming up.
ESPN's exclusive presentation of NCAA basketball is brought to you by the new Dodge. It's about change. Papa shot basketball at O'Brien's. It's a fantastic. Mm hmm. Has frequent heartburn been a persistent problem for you? Have you treated it but still suffer on two or more days a week? Do you keep getting heartburn even though you've changed your diet? Your heartburn may be due to acid reflux disease. Ask your doctor about Prilosec. One capsule daily can provide complete 24-hour heartburn relief because it controls acid for 24 hours. 24 hours. Ask your doctor if Prilosec is right for you. Call to learn more. The most common side effects are headache, diarrhea, and abdominal pain. Want 24-hour heartburn relief with one daily dose? Ask your doctor about the most prescribed acid control medicine in America, Prilosec. Yo, man, it's Lisa Mendy. Translation, let's record our favorite songs on mini disc. Uh, track five, got no flavor. Perhaps we should delete this selection. Man, you got to flip the spins, yo. Cassettes are hurt. Unlike cassettes, I can move tracks and re-record digitally up to a million times. Yo, this is Ellen like a villain, super macadocious, chilling off the his No diz out. I have no idea what he just said. <laughs> Sony Minidisc, the digital way to record your music. Available at Sears. Dodge Durango can tow up to 7,400 pounds, nearly half a ton more than its nearest competitor. That's two extra dirt bikes. One more great big water toy. Or one more baby grand. Hey, my Durango toes more toys. Gonna lose his wimpy toe in blues. This halftime report is presented by Courtyard by Marriott, the hotel designed by business travelers. Welcome to the Courtyard by Marriott halftime report. I'm Larry Beal. You know, this is rivalry weekend in college football, but also in college basketball. Florida and Florida State uh, on the gridiron. They're going to play tomorrow. Both of those teams still entertaining hopes of playing in the national championship game, the Fiesta Bowl. Well, they said... Hey, let's make it a football-basketball doubleheader. Actually, the hoops game coming first. Florida and Florida State, sellout crowd, so some fans had to watch on the big screen outside. Florida early, Kareem Shabazz stuffing the shot away. Florida's going the other way. Teddy Dupay, the easy lay-in, 32-14. to 14. Florida State continuing to turn it over. Major Parker with the swat. Parker up to Brent Wright for the jam. Florida ahead by 18 at one point, but State comes back. Delvin Arrington with the steal here. Oliver Simmons follows. Arrington with the shot. And Florida State was down only eight at the half as they made a big comeback. It's 44-38 now in the second half. Florida led the nation in threes made per game last year at over nine per game. Hofstra and Maryland. Hey, check this one out because uh, the Flying Dutchman flying high in the first half so far. Two-point game. Maryland, incredible stat. They've won 62 of 63 in non-conference games under Gary Williams at home. Georgia Tech hammering the Citadel 38-25 at the half. Alvin Jones for Tech at 18 points, 12 boards, 9 blocks in the opener against Charleston Southern. Bad news for the North Carolina Tar Heel basketball program. They will be without the services of 6'10 center Vasco Evtimov. The NCAA ruling he's got to sit out the next 13 games. He played for a club team in France, and technically that is pro ball, and that's a no-no according to the NCAA. So they will not have the big guy available for the next 13 games. And he's a pretty good player in the middle for the Tar Heels. There was some talk that he might be able to start for the Tar Heels. Coming up next on the Courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report, Dick Vitale looks at the little guys, the best point guards in the country.
what? Are we on? Hello, welcome to Dodge Durango 101. Today, I'll be covering the 5.2 and 5.9 liter Magnum V8 vis-a-vis -vis Durango superiority in the class structure of domestic compact sport utility vehicles. You're not listening. You're just staring at the Durango, aren't you? Aren't you? Why do I even bother? I don't know. I'm just standing up here like a big doofus. Big Bob's exterminating. Spiders? Oh, we do spiders. Scorpions? I love the challenge. Centipedes? Centipedes are our speciality. The queen centipede. Bring her on. <laughs> The Bugs are back. Centipede on CD-ROM. Take on five all-new worlds or play classic style. Get your hands on Centipede for PC CD-ROM. Uh, maybe we could talk about this? <laughs> Jack forgot his briefcase. I can see him. Don't worry. We both have Nextel. He's crossing the street. Phone him. Nah, it's too easy. I can text page him. Nah, where's the fun in that? If he gets to the airport without the presentation, we're dead. Time for the secret weapon. Two-way radio feature. Right about now. Hey, Jack. Hold up, my man. I think you... Jack. Nextel's integrated features make ordinary cell phones seem ordinary. Welcome back to the Courtyard by Marriott Halftime Report. During the first half, we've been treated to watch one of the best point guards in the country in Mateen. Cleves got 12 points and two assess, assists for the Spartans of Michigan State. Dick Vitale is thinking about the backcourt, making sure that you get the point. When you take a look at college basketball right now, there are outstanding point guards throughout America. The reason coaches understand, to win big, you better have great point guard play. What does a point guard basically do? Well, number one, you want him to distribute the basketball. Two, you'd like him to make open shots. And number three, put all kinds of pressure on the basketball defensively. Hey, when I look across America, five of my favorites, well, we're right now in blue heaven. That's right, down at Chapel Hill. And I love Ed Coda. Ed Coda can flat out distribute the ball. Last year, 7.2 assists a game. He got the ball to the people at the right time, and that's why Carolina marched to the Final Four. This year, Bill Guthridge wants him to score a little bit more, and he can do that as well. Hey, you go to Michigan State, and they're having all kinds of expectations, and the reason, Mateen Cleaves, he may be the best point guard in America. He can defend, he can score, he can get the ball to open people, and he flat out knows how to win. Talk about winning, let's go to Utah. That's right, we think of the running Utes, and you think of Andre Miller. Just call Lute Olsen up. Ask him about Miller. Last year he was brilliant when they beat Arizona in the Elite Eight. Hey, I'll tell you one thing. Great leadership skills. He can rebound for a guard as well. And he can flat out take it to the rack and make the big play. Hey, down at UConn, Connecticut. They are so excited this year. Yes, they got Richard Hamilton, the scoring machine. But the guy that makes him go at the point guard slot, Khalid El Amin. El Amin is a penetrator. He creates opportunities. He can shoot the open jump shot. He makes makes big plays, and he's got that certain cockiness that you'd like out of a winner. Hey, we talk about Kentucky. Three times to the final game. National champs in 96 and 98. 97, they lose an overtime heartbreaker for the national title. Their leader at the point guard slot, Wayne Turner. Quickness, penetration ability, has improved his range as a shooter. Yes, if you want to win big, you better get a great point guard, baby. And I'll tell you this, they'll make my all Thomas Edison team. They create, they innovate, and they create all kinds of excitement. All right, Dick. Now, St. Louis had a guy who created all kinds of excitement last year. Larry Hughes was the national freshman of the year. The problem is he didn't come back for his sophomore season. He's off to the NBA. So St. Louis taking on Illinois, the post-Hughes era. Cross-court pass, Fess Hawkins, Corey Bradford for the three-pointer. And the fighting Illini off to a 5-2 lead. Ryan Luchtefeld with a jump shot as St. Louis comes back to go up 10-7, and now uh, early action in the first half, midway through, it's 13-11, Billikens leading. And we move on, Penn State and Ohio State. John Havlicek on hand, first Big Ten game of the new arena. John Sanderson missing, Michael Red there for the follow. 4-2 Buckeyes. Dan Earl, three from the top of the key, knocks it down. Ohio State 3-0, their first Big Ten game in the new 
Schottenstein Center, and the Buckeyes leading 14 to 9. Take a break, come back with more of the halftime report. Oh, hi, honey. Oh, hi, honey. Hey, look at that one. She's mine. Nothing's quite as touching as watching your baby. And there's nothing quite as comforting as an auto service center we're seeing is relieving. STS does tires, brakes, wheel alignments, and much more on anything with four wheels. Guaranteed service, even scheduled maintenance on vehicles under warranty. That's a difference you can see and trust. STS Tire and Auto Centers. This My is my God. STS guy. It's a trust thing.